Welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is the Afcast. I'm your host Tim Dowd. This is for Living with MS in Tenerife. We go live Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 5.55 and Monday is all about you, which is uh, Meetup Monday. Go to timothydowd.com and register to join us there. Wednesday is Balcony Banter where we discuss a topic that you've suggested and uh, you can join in on your tablet or PC by coming on live on the show and discussing any topic that you like, just let us know beforehand. Friday is me in a bar, and if you want to meet up, just let me know where you're going to be, I'll try and get to you. Or you can come to me in the village, in Kayal Salvaki. I go walking Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all days in the week, when I've got time, about 9 a.m. If you want to join me on one of those, send me an email. And uh, today's show is going to be weather, a little bit of news from the website, and a nice interesting story about Casa Fuerte in Adeje. So this is Tim Dow for Living with MS in Tenerife. Enjoy the show. Well, they say there's going to be plenty of weather in the next few days, especially on my app here. And what the app says is it's going to be 23, 24, 25 degrees in the shade. And Wednesday, Kalima, really hot weather coming our way, extreme, in fact. And uh, the weather is the same all year round, really. It's sunny during the day, the odd cloud or two. And the only difference between summer and winter is how warm it is in the evening. It hasn't dropped below 13 degrees since I've been here. And typically last winter, it didn't even drop below 18 for us on here on the balcony anyway. So if that's the weather you like, get a flight and come out anytime you like. So we go to the government website now, gobiernodecanarias.org. And the headlines here is the presidency. Torres meets with Pedro Sanchez in La Moncloa and attends the Joint Commission for the Reconstruction of La Palma. The second headline is the government invests 5.5 million euros in the new CEIP in Barranco del Ciervo in Pajara. And of course, Ecological Transition publishes the PTE Canaria on the energy portal of the government of the Canary Islands. If you want to see that and any other headlines, just go to gobiernodecanarias.org. Health registers 10,597 downloads of the individual health card in the digital format. And the 2022 forest fire campaign will have 1,456 troops, 156 vehicles and 15 air assets. And that is your news. So we're going to go over now to our roving reporter. This is the other Tim, and he was up in Casa Fuerte on Sunday afternoon, and he did a little report for you. Enjoy the show. Here we are at the top end of Adeji, and I was going to have a look in Casa Fuerte, which is behind me, and then I got an email saying that the council are just about to, I've got to read this, begin the process of expropriation. That means the, the owners have been asked for decades to do something about it, and they haven't. And so now the council is going to expropriate the property. And it goes on to say, 
The obvious ruinous state of the building and its surroundings has led the administration to move to rescue the historic monument, which is an official BIC, which is a construction of cultural interest. A Deci Council have voted on May the 27th to move to begin the process of the expropriation of the Casa Fuerte to the rescue the building given its obvious ruinous state. The Casa Fuerte was a declared a Bien de Interés Cultural by the regional government, which means it's an official item of cultural interest. In the monument category in 1986 and is located in the historical centre of a Deci town beside the Santa Ursula church. This is an historic monument and we owe it to the people and town of Adeji, says the Adeji mayor, Jose Miguel Rodriguez Fraga. The Casa Fuerte is hugely significant, symbolically, and we have to recover and conserve it for the town, he said. So they're going to actually um, conserve this and rebuild it. Now, a couple of the repairs that have been made have been done basically not as good as it should have been done and with inappropriate materials. And so they have been in dialogue for a long time with numerous owners of the property. And now they're using an old law to expropriate the property to save it for the benefit of the town. They go on to say, the initiative has been taken by the local administration given the state of the deterioration of the building, an historic monument to the town, both by passage of time and the abandonment of parts of the area by the current owners, as well as certain activities of the past, walls falling into disrepair and graffiti evidence in the area. So it goes on uh, also to say the history of uh, the um, Casa Fuerte, which is the fort house. In 1553, Pedro Ponte sought permission to build a fort to defend the area from continuous incursions from pirates who were invading the coast of Adeji. In 1519, in 1555, he was granted the right to go ahead and build the Casa Fuerte, and in 1556, which over the following three centuries became the political, economy, uh, economic and social centre of Adeji under the Ponte family. Uh, this was a fort residence in combination with farming, mansion and fortification with an area of 7,200 square metres. There was a castle, a tower, a storage sheds, granaries, a bakery, a forge, homes for the servants and administrators, a chapel and the principal palace. According to the records, the most important building is an archive hall which contained thousands of documents defined by the historians as Vieja Clavijo, as the treasure of the, of the Canaries. The Casa Fuerte, now 466 years old, is part of the history of the colonization of the southwest of Tenerife and the building was the economic center of the area. So we're not going to be able to go in and look, but as soon as it's expropriated and brought back to its former glory, we'll take you inside. enjoyed that it was uh, very interesting that I got that information from Cleo O'Flynn who's here on the island and is, is responsible for communication in the Adeki Council thank you Cleo so um, as I say we go live Monday Wednesday and Friday at 5.55 Monday being the meetup Monday Wednesday being balcony banter and Friday freaky Friday I also go walking Monday to Friday in the mornings when I've got time and if you want to join me, let me know and I'll make sure I come to an area near you. If you're on the island, just go to timothydown.com and let us know there. Um, we do have a Facebook page, LWMST, and we do have a Twitter account, but we only write to Twitter. We don't really look at Twitter. But you can join us anytime you like on YouTube, 
facebook.com slash LWMST. This is Tim Dow for Living with MS in Tenerife, signing off. Enjoy the AFCast, and we'll see you on the next one. See you all by now.